Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome dear learners to the session of managerial economics. I am Dr. Supriya Jain working as an assistant professor in the Institute of Business Management at GLA University, Mathura. Let us start with our today's session. Before we talk about our today's class, let us look at the topics which we have covered in our previous session. So in our previous session, we have talked about consumer choices and their behavior. As because it is important for us to know how consumers are making their choices how they behave in the market. So through that we have discussed about their uh, you know taste and preferences, their choices where we have talked about cardinal concept as well as ordinal concept of utility. Marshall gave this cardinal concept and says that utility can be measured and utility is the satisfaction which a consumer derive out of the consumption of a commodity. So this cardinal concept is basically based on two laws where we have talked about law of diminishing marginal utility and law of equi marginal utility. Law of diminishing marginal utility works with only one commodity at a time whereas in real life uh, one, uh, a person does not consume only one commodity at a time but consumes more than one. So as they would be able to satisfy their uh, you know needs and uh, desire as well as to gain maximum satisfaction out of it. So for that we have also talked about law of equi marginal utility which says that the marginal utility derived out of the consumption of all the commodities at the end should remain same. Thereafter we have talked about this ordinal utility concept which was given by Ellen Hex and in this we have seen uh, the indifference curve relativeness. Okay. This indifference curve is also called as ISO equality curve, right? ISO cost curve. So the, the, this curve basically help us to understand how people can have the different combinations of the commodity so as their utility will remain the same. Okay. And in this we have also discussed the different indifferences curve okay. after the properties we have see, uh, studied it into the different situation like for perfect substitute goods how indifference curve will be shown for complementary goods how we represent this in the indifference curve and for the situations like bad okay so all these things were covered over there and then we have talked about the consumer income because this is basically helping the people to understand how much they can spend based on their budget line and when a consumer will be able to reach out the equilibrium position right equilibrium is uh, basically uh, the state of balance and a consumer will reach up to the equilibrium point where the consumer is able to uh, you know spend the resource that is the income right which will be giving them the maximum satisfaction and lastly we have talked about this revealed preference theory which was given by Somelson and based on this theory we can say that utility can be measured in a better way as compared to the cardinal and ordinal concepts and here consumer reveal their preferences and they have the completeness of their choices where they are very much clear which product they are going to prefer like if there are two products product A and product B so which products are they going to prefer if they are preferring A over B then always they will the person will prefer commodity A over B right so these were the topics which were covered in our previous session let us look at the topics or you can say the learning objectives of our today's session. So firstly we are going to understand the meaning of cost here in economic analysis and its relevance in managerial decision making. So particularly in this lecture we are going to talk about the cost, what uh, different type of costs are involved into the business and how managerial decisions make uh, you know uh, making can be done better right and here you will also able to understand the different type of cost which focus on difference between economic as well as accounting philosophies. Further you will also able to analyze the importance of matching cost with the relevant time frames and to understand the short and long run cost right and lastly you will this will help you to develop an understanding of estimation of cost function. 
So, these will be the learning objective of our today's session. Let us look what cost is. Now, this is the term which everybody of you must have heard because everything involves cost. So, how we are going to define this cost? We can say that cost is basically a sacrifice, right? Cost is a sacrifice which you are making for uh, you know uh, buying something or for producing something. So, here we can define that cost is a sacrifice or foregoing that has occurred or going to occur, right? It has occurred if you have done that production and whatever you are going to produce in the future. So, what cost is going to be involved that has been uh, measured in terms of money and that is why we have written here measured in monetary terms. So, if you look at the cost function, we can say that cost is uh, equals to the function of Q is the uh, quantity, T is the technology and uh, price of input factor, right? As because quantity, the more quantity will be there, the more cost will be there. So, cost is affected by the quantity of the commodity. Cost is also affected by the technology, right? Better the state of technology, lesser will be the cost. And then we have price of inputs, definitely if the input prices are high, cost will also be higher, right? So, cost basically depends on different factors also. So, these are the most important factors which affects the cost of the commodity. So, if we need to define the cost function, we can write it this way, where cost is the function of quantity, technology as well as price of the input. Now, moving ahead, we have uh, cost analysis and uh, classification. This is important, right? How are we going to analyze the cost and how differently we are going to classify it? How many categorization we can do in the cost, right? Because as we have different type of cost in the businesses, so here we have made our classification into different categories. So, let us first understand what is meant by cost analysis. See, why cost analysis is important? Because as we know in today's time, uh, we have lot of competition, right? And it is very difficult for the producer to increase the price of the commodity to earn more. So, the only choice they are left with is to reduce the cost of their commodity or to uh, reduce the cost of the production, right? If they want to increase their profit margin or if they want to have long term uh, survival in the market, then it is very important for the manufacturer to analyze the cost, what are the different type of costs which are involved in the business and how they will be able to uh, reduce these costs by their uh, understanding, right? So, cost analysis basically refers to the study of behavior of cost in relation to one or more production criteria, namely the size of output, scale of operation on which they are working, price of factors of productions as well as other relevant economic variable. So, all these aspects are being taken up into account to understand different type of cost involved into the business. So, here we are going to uh, have the categorization of cost and we have categorized the cost into explicit and implicit cost. The first category is, secondly we are going to understand about incremental cost and sunk cost. Then we will discuss direct cost and indirect cost, controllable cost and non-controllable cost and thereafter we will discuss shutdown cost and abandonment cost. So, how are we going to understand these different type of cost? Let us start with the very first one that is the explicit and implicit cost. Now, what is explicit and what is implicit? Explicit, the name will help you to understand the extra uh, external cost, right? the cost which we are paying to the outsiders, right? All those costs would be considered to be an explicit cost. Whereas, implicit costs are those costs which we are not paying to anybody, right? So, let us read the difference between the explicit and the implicit cost. You will be able to understand it better, right? The costs which are either paid in cash or recorded in the books of accounts are called explicit cost. So, here we are talking about two things the cost which are being paid to someone like we are paying salaries, like we are paying for the raw material, right? Whatever we are uh, making, whatever the payments we are making, right? To anyone uh, for the services they are providing, for the work they are doing in the business, 
that particular cost and the cost which we are recording in the books of accounts like depreciation is there okay whatever the assets we are having uh, they all uh, they depreciate every year right so by what amount they are depreciating we show that amount in the books of accounts right we are not paying this cost to anybody but every year our machineries our assets are depreciating right so that particular cost is also a part of an explicit cost right so here the examples are written like wages we are paying to the labor the salaries which we are paying the cost of purchasing the material or the license we if you have taken any license for doing your business so all these costs are the example of explicit cost whereas implicit cost are those costs which you are not paying to somebody neither you are mentioning them in the books of account that means these costs are there but they are not been recorded anywhere and we are not paying uh, these costs to anybody now you will wonder what are these cost now uh, whatever the cost if you are not paying to anybody and if you are not mentioning them in the books of account then how we are going to understand what kind of cost they are i hope students you remember the opportunity cost concept which we have studied in our initial classes where i have told you that opportunity cost is the cost of sacrificing the next best alternative right and in economics we are not only concerned with the accounting profit but we are concerned with the economic profit right whether we are in economic gain or economic loss so implicit cost are basically those imputed cost which are there which we are not paying out of our pocket but yes if we are doing this thing and we could have done something else then definitely we could have uh, we would have been able to earn something on those particular uh, alternatives right so what are these implicit cost uh, implicit cost can be like if you are using your own building for your business purpose right uh, whatever the business you are doing if you are doing it on your own property for which you are the owner so those uh, those cost those type of cost would be considered to be an implicit cost because you are not going to pay rent to yourself right but if you are uh, if you were not doing the business on your own own land if you have given this land uh, to somebody for rent purpose right so you must have earned that amount okay so the amount which you could have earned as a rent which now you are not able to earn because you are doing your business on your own property so that amount would be considered to be an imputed cost or implicit cost right whatever the capital you have invested okay if you have taken that money from the market definitely you would have paid interest on it but your money which you are investing in your business you are not charging any interest on it so that is the cost which is called as implicit cost right these cost are the cost which we are not paying to anybody nor we are mentioning them in the books of accounts so i hope the difference between explicit and implicit cost is clear right explicit cost are those costs which are been paid to the outsider as well as are also been recorded in the books of accounts whereas implicit cost are those costs which we are not paying to anyone and nor we are mentioning them in the books of accounts right now moving ahead we have the another category where we have incremental cost and sunk cost now what are these incremental cost again we have talked about this incremental cost when we have studied about the incremental cost principle whatever the decision we are making whatever the change we are making in our business and because of that change the increased cost would be called as incremental cost either if you want to add new product to your production line or you want to increase your production capacity or you want to add some more promotion uh, pro promotional strategies to your business right whatever whatever the uh, change you are making in your business and because of that change right if your cost increases then that increased cost would be called as incremental cost right and if you will not bring those changes then definitely that cost will not increase so sometime we also call these cost as an escapable cost because we can escape from them right because they are future oriented if you are going to make that decision then these cost will incur if you are not bringing that change these cost will not incur whereas opposite to it we have sunk cost right now sunk cost are those cost which are related to the past okay they 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 related to the past because this is the amount which you have already given to somebody right suppose you have given some amount to someone and that person declare himself as an insolvent right so how will you be able to recover that amount okay bad debts are the examples of sunk cost right right you will not be able to recover it again now so on the other hand we are saying 
Some costs are those costs that do not change by changing the nature or the level of business activity because they are related to the past like depreciation is also an example of sunk cost or you can say amortization of past expenses right. So, we are not able to recover them back that is why they are non avoidable and you can also call them as a non escapable you cannot escape from these cost. Now, next is direct and indirect cost. Direct cost very simple to understand the cost which you can directly associated okay, to, the, to that particular process or uh, to the particular product right or to that department then if, if any cost is having a direct association then those cost would be considered as an direct cost. Whereas, if you are not able to have a direct association with the product process or that particular department then those costs would be considered to be as an indirect cost. Like for example, right a material used in a pen ok the pen which I am using right now the pen uh, the material for, uh, for which it is made of right of which it is made of would be a direct cost ok because we can easily calculate like for, uh, for manufacturing this pen whatever the material has been used the cost is a direct cost or you can say electricity expenses for painting the car is also a direct expense for painting process ok because uh, it is a painting process and whatever the electricity is being incurred for painting that particular car can be directly associated with that process ok. So, if there is a direct uh, relationship to it then those costs would be considered as an direct cost opposite to it we have indirect cost indirect cost or those costs which do not have a direct relationship like for example expenses uh, for the gatekeeper at factory gate ok uh, there is a factory and on that in that factory on a gate uh, there is a gatekeeper but inside the factory you are producing pen pencil refill ink ok so you cannot associate directly this cost what you are paying him as a salary to any of these product because altogetherly uh, different kind of products are being manufactured and he is there for taking care or take, uh, as a security of your factory. So, whatever the amount you are paying him for the salary as a salary uh, there is no direct relationship with that particular product or a process or a department ok. So, those costs would be considered to be as an indirect cost. Then we have controllable and non-controllable cost. There are some cost in the business which can be controlled through proper management and supervision like cost of inventory if you are managing your business in a better way if you are supervising your things in a right direction then definitely uh, you can manage your inventory better and there will be a lesser cost like cost of labor sometime people waste their time talking to each other if you are not uh, you know taking proper uh, rounds in your factory if you are not supervising them if you are not managing your work right. So, might be they, these are the cost which can incur but with your proper management and with your proper supervision you would be able to reduce these cost right on that is why these costs are called as controllable cost. On the other hand we have certain cost in the organization which cannot be controlled even with the proper supervision and management right like for example depreciation every amount right even if you are controlling them or you are you know managing them in a uh, you know proper way as well then also this depreciation cost will be there right they will definitely depreciate. So, those costs are called as controllable and non-controllable cost. And then we have this last categorization where we have shutdown cost and abandonment cost. Now, which cost would be considered to be as in shutdown cost? Shutdown cost basically in, uh, arises when there is a temporary suspension of your business activity because of some reason right you are not working right now and temporarily you have suspended your business operation. But whatever the you know suspension has been taken place that is for a temporary time period. So, during that period also there are some costs which are incurring ok like the cost of security of the plant and machinery like uh, staff layoff expenses can be there, recruitment and training expenses of the people when you are going to start it again right. So, all these costs would be considered to be as an shutdown cost whereas, abandonment costs are those costs which, which will arise after the fully retirement of your uh, you know fixed assets right if you completely closing down your business unit and for uh, you know 
selling out your fixed uh, assets right disposing of your fixed asset after the complete closure of your business would be considered as an abandonment cost okay these cost arises when there is a complete closure of business activities like for example cost of disposal of plant and machinery now you want to dispose them of and for disposing them also you need to incur some cost so those costs would be considered to be an abandonment cost so if you are uh, recalling it again you can say that shutdown costs are those costs which arises because of the temporary suspension of the business activities whereas abandonment costs are those costs which arises because of a complete closure of your business unit right so these are the different categorization which we have made regarding the cost if we go back let me help you to understand them once again explicit and implicit cost right explicit costs are those costs which we are paying to the outsiders or we are mentioning them in the books of accounts whereas implicit costs are those costs which we are not paying to anybody nor we are mentioning them in the books of accounts incremental costs are those costs which are related to the future they they changes because of the change in the business activity whatever the change may be whereas sunk costs are related to the past and these are the costs which we cannot change right the, the, these costs have already happened they are already sunk right that is why we are calling them as in sunk cost direct cost are those costs which have a direct association with a product or a process whereas indirect costs are those costs which are not directly related to any product or a process then there are some costs which are called as controllable uh, those costs which can be controlled by uh, proper supervision and management are your controllable cost whereas the cost which you cannot control by proper supervision and management also are called as non controllable cost then we have shutdown and abandonment cost shutdown cost arises when there is a temporary suspension of your business uh, unit whereas abandonment cost arises when there is a complete closure of your business unit right so these are some classification and different type of cost which are involved in the business now let us move to the very important part where we are going to understand uh, the cost which occurs in short run as well as in the long run and they are the most important cost for the understanding of cost and output relationship of business activities right so let us start with the very first one where we have total fixed cost or we can call it as in fixed cost also so uh, fixed cost as you can see uh, the name here is the fixed cost so these are the costs which remain fixed okay so the cost which remain fixed which does not changes with the changes in the production are known as fixed cost okay like for example rent of a building or a factory uh, salary of a factory gatekeeper depreciation of a machinery are the expenses of the fixed nature they does not change with the change in the output right your rent is not going to change if you have taken a building on a rent if you are producing uh, you know lesser units in that particular building then also you are paying the same amount if you are producing uh, you know uh, larger unit of production you are making then also you are paying the same amount of rent so there are some costs which does not changes with the change in the production those uh, costs would be considered to be an fixed cost but one thing which you have to remember here is this concept of fixed cost is applicable only in the short run right in long run there is no cost which is fixed in nature all the cost are variable in the long run so this uh, fixed cost concept is applicable in the short run only right for a period of time they are fixed and they does not change with the change in the production this is how we represent the fixed cost curve here on the x axis we have output and on the y axis we have cost and you can see this uh, line which shows that the fixed cost remain fixed even if the output is zero or we increases the output or we further increase the output the cost will remain same there will be no change to it right and uh, looking to the next one we have total variable cost right now again this word is helping you to know uh, how we are going to define this variable the cost which varies right which varies with the variation in the output right if you are in uh, producing more then these cost will be more if you are producing less then these cost will be less right so the cost which varies with the variation in the output would be called as total variable cost right 
and one thing which you need to understand for this variable cost is generally the rate of increase in the total variable cost remains different at different level right i'll show you the graph where you'll be able to understand it better this is how we represent the total variable cost curve you can see when the production was zero the variable cost was also zero but as and when we have started the quantity uh, production the average uh, variable cost has also started increasing but with this curve you can see that initially uh, when variable cost increases the rate of increase is lesser right initially they increase at a uh, lesser pace then there is a kind of a stability there they are uh, not stability exactly but they are also uh, uh, increasing at a very slow pace and finally they increase very fastly right so this is how we define this total variable cost uh, the rate of uh, increase in the total variable cost differs at different stages okay the next is total cost total fixed cost and total cost so here we have written here is total cost is equals to total fixed cost plus total variable cost if we combine them together we get this total cost okay so for the uh, you know production purpose we calculate this total cost what is the total cost of producing any commodity including uh, fixed cost as well as the variable cost and this is how we represent all the three on the graph here on the x axis again we have output and on the y axis we are representing the cost and this is our fixed cost curve which shows the cost uh, these cost are fixed they will not increase whereas you can see the variable cost curve this starts from zero because these are the cost which will increase with the increase in the output and from here we are going to start our total cost curve this is the total cost curve which includes both right because always uh, total cost is always involving the fixed cost and variable cost right so up to this level we have the fixed cost at uh, zero output also so our total cost curve will start from this point not from this point so this you have to understand right then looking at the averages of these cost we have talked about the concept of total fixed cost now we are talking about the average fixed cost and as we all know average is basically we will be able to arrive at the average figure when we divide the total fixed cost upon the total quantity right when we are dividing the total of the fixed cost and how much output has been produced then i would be able to get the average fixed cost that means it is the per unit fixed cost whatever the production you have made if you are calculating the fixed cost per unit then you are going to find out the average fixed cost okay so let us see the way we are calculating this average fixed cost in this table you can see uh, we have total output we have total fixed cost and here we have average fixed cost so how we have calculated it the total output when it was zero then also the fixed cost was 1000 right and as and when the output is increasing but you can see the total fixed cost is constant it is not increasing that we have already understood the total cost uh, total fixed cost will remain fixed but in the case of average fixed cost you can see uh, for the first case it will be uh, no fixed cost average fixed cost will not be there but yes when we have started our total output in this case our average fixed cost was 1 what we are doing we are dividing the total fixed cost by total output okay in the second case it will reaches uh, 0.50 and then 0.33 and so on so what you can see here is our average fixed cost is reducing uh, on a continuous basis as and when we are increasing our output right so average fixed cost will keep on decreasing when there will be an increase in the output okay so this is how we basically represents the average fixed cost curve right and this is the shape which is also called as uh, rectangular hyperbola right uh, where it is representing that the average fixed cost is decreasing as in when there is an increase in the output okay and if you see the rate of uh, reduction in average fixed cost initially is higher and then it will reduce at the slower rate okay so rate also differs it reduces but initially it reduces at the uh, higher rate and later on it reduces with the lesser rate okay now moving ahead we have average variable cost right like we have understood the concept of average fixed cost again the average uh, variable cost is the variable cost per unit right if you are calculating 
the per unit variable cost of the commodity we calculated and again for this calculation we can have the total variable cost divided by total quantity ok. So, you can uh, look at the uh, chart again here for the calculation of average variable cost here we have total output and here we have total variable cost and you can see that as in when the output was increasing our variable cost was also increasing because that is its property ok. It varies with the variation in the output whereas in case of average variable cost when we have calculated and the same formula we are using we are going to divide total variable cost with the total output right. So, here are the figures of average variable cost and here also you can see initially our average variable cost decreases up to this point and now it has started increasing right. So, up to this point it has decreased but now here it has increased and here also it has increased. So, if you draw the curve for average variable cost the curve look like this right initially when you will increase the size of output your average co variable cost will decline and then gradually it will start increasing ok. So, this is how you draw the average variable cost curve. Then again we have average cost like we have calculated the total cost we do have average cost as well right and average cost is again the summation of average fixed cost and average variable cost. So, if these two costs are given you can calculate the average cost with these figures also if not given then you can calculate the total cost and then again you will divide it by the number of unit produced that means the quantity then you will be able to calculate the average cost. Again average cost is the cost per unit right whatever the commodity you are producing per unit cost is called as average cost. Now again this is the complete picture to make you understand how we have calculated this we have already studied this is the total output total fixed cost we have seen and we have also calculated average fixed cost this is the total variable cost and we have also understood how to calculate average uh, variable cost. Now you can see this average cost uh, column right there are two ways like I said either we can add average fixed cost or average variable cost then also we can calculate it or we can divide this total cost upon the total output. So, here we can get the figures of average cost and if you look at these figures you can say that initially this average cost is declining up to this point it is declining and then at this point it has increased and again at this point it has also increased. So, uh, looking at this uh, you know tabular representation you can find out very easily up to which point we should produce so that our cost of production should be minimum. See the analysis which we are making here is for our purpose is to reduce the cost and how are we going to find out up to which point right up to what, what point we should uh, go ahead with our production so that our cost of production will be minimum. So, you can see if you are producing up to 4000 units of output your cost of production will be minimum. If you are producing lesser than this then also your cost will be more and if you are producing more than this then also your cost will be uh, higher right. So, if you want to produce up to the optimum point you should be considering this average cost where your average cost is minimum that point is basically considered as an optimum point up to this point if you are doing your production your cost of production will be minimum right. So, this is what basically we try to understand here and uh, how do we represent this average cost curve? This is how we represent the average cost curve again this is of U shape which says that when there is an increase in the output initially it decreases and then thereafter this started increasing ok. So, this is your average cost curve. Now, we have marginal cost right marginal cost is again the cost uh, you can define that this cost calculated by finding out what additional cost has been incurred for the production of one additional unit right. So, whatever production you have done and if you are going to add one more uh, unit to it. So, for producing one extra unit what extra cost you have incurred would be considered as an marginal cost. Okay, so, marginal cost is defined as an addition in the total cost because of change in one extra unit right. This is important for you to note down one extra unit of product if you have added to it 
and for adding that one extra unit what extra cost you are incurring would be considered as an marginal cost. So, again here we have the uh, ways to calculate this marginal cost. The simple formula is T C n minus T C n minus 1, n minus 1 means the one extra unit which we have produced that you have to find out. And again there is an another way where you can calculate it by finding out the change in total cost upon change in total quantity, right. And if you look further to calculate this marginal cost, you can see that change in total cost upon change in total output. So, in the first case the change is uh, 10 and 19. So, difference between them is 9 and here the total output change is 1, 9 divided by 1, 9. Then difference of 19 and 27 is 8, 8 divided by 1, 8. So, this is how you are calculating your marginal cost and again you can see this the marginal cost is decreasing initially right up to this point it decreases but thereafter again it has started increases right up to this point it is decreasing and in this case this case it has increased. So, if you will draw the marginal cost curve again this marginal cost curve is of u shape uh, stating that when there is an increase in the output initially this marginal cost curve will decline and then thereafter it started increasing right. So, this is how we uh, represent our marginal cost curve. So, let us start with short run uh, output cost curves right. The basic understanding which we have made about different cost was because of uh, understanding how we are going to relate our cost and output curves in short run as well as in the long run. As we have already understood we have different time frames in the business. We have short run and the period which is not enough for the producers to change to a new situation that has been considered as in short run period. Whereas, long run is a planning horizon where we can plan out our activities because there is no concept of fixed cost in the long run right. So, first we are going to understand how these cost curve will help us to make our production in the short run. So, cost output relationship can also be shown by the graphs and it will see that average fixed cost curve falls as the output rises from the lower level to the higher level. Let me make it more clear to you with the understanding of this graph. Here we have represented all the cost altogether. This is the average fixed cost curve if you guys remember we have uh, discussed that average fixed cost curve will always decline whenever there is an increase in the output. Then this is our average variable cost curve which is again of u shaped initially it decreases and then thereafter it increases right. Then we have average total cost which is again a u shaped cost ok, but this will always be more than average variable cost because average cost is the summation of average fixed cost and average variable cost. And here we have marginal cost also. Marginal cost curve is also u shape initially it declines and thereafter it started increasing right and it is the cost of producing one additional unit. Now, let us look at the relationship between uh, these cost. Here we have uh, first we will define the relationship between average variable cost, average fixed cost and average cost. So, how these cost work? So, very first point says that initially our average variable cost is decreasing our average fixed cost is decreasing therefore, our average cost will also decrease. Why? Uh, we are trying to understand how these costs work, what is the relationship between them. This is how we basically draw the curve right, this is our average fixed cost curve right, this is our average variable cost curve and this is our average cost curve. So, here right now we are understanding the relationship between these three costs. So, what we are saying initially our average fixed cost is declining, our average variable cost is declining therefore, our average cost will also decline. Then at the second stage we are saying that average fixed uh, variable cost is still uh, sorry average variable cost has started increasing now, but our average fixed cost is still decreasing. So, now what will happen to the average cost? So, here you can see that average variable cost has started increasing but the average fixed cost is still decreasing and the rate of decrease average fixed cost is decreasing maybe by 10 percent and average variable cost is increasing, but it is increasing only by 5 percent. So, basically our average cost still declines by the 
5 percent you can say. So, average cost is still decreasing at the second stage and the third stage says that our average variable cost has started increasing now and average fixed cost is still decreasing. Where now, what will happen to the average cost curve? Here you can see that now the rate of increase in average variable cost is more than the rate of decrease in the average fixed cost. Now, average variable cost is increasing by 10 percent and average fixed cost is declining by the 5 percent. Now, therefore, average cost will increase by 5 percent, right. So, this is how we basically establish the relationship between average fixed cost, average variable cost and average cost, how these cost curves are being defined, right. So, uh, you, we have seen these properties earlier also that average fixed cost curve will always decline, but the rate of decrease will be different at different stages. Initially, the rate of decrease uh, in the average fixed cost is more and at the later stages it declines with the slower rate. Whereas, in case of average variable cost initially it decreases, uh, you know initially it decreases and thereafter it started increasing, but the decrease uh, you know the increase in at the middle point is slower and later on it is increases with the higher rate, right. And again this is the average cost curve which is the summation of average variable cost and average fixed cost and why this average cost curve is of U shape that explanation we have understood here. So, you can say that average cost curve is of U shape and this is because basically happen because of economies and diseconomies of scale, right. Working at different scale, we do have certain advantages and disadvantages. So, average cost curve is a U shape curve that happens because of economies and diseconomies of scale and in our next lecture, we will cover about economies and diseconomies of scale in detail there you will be able to understand this concept better. So, for now I hope you are clear with the relationship between average variable cost and average fixed cost curve as well as with the average cost, right. So, I will wrap this uh, you know discussion what we have made here to understand the relationship between uh, marginal cost and average variable cost, right. So, let me draw uh, this uh, remove this graph also from this paper. Now, let us look the relationship between average variable cost and marginal cost, right. So, here we have this graph, this is our average variable cost and this is our marginal cost say, right. This is our average variable cost and this is our marginal cost curve. So, how are we establishing the relationship here? Till the time our marginal cost is lesser than average variable cost right till the time our marginal cost is lesser than average variable cost, average variable cost curve will decline, right. When the marginal cost is greater than average variable cost, when the marginal cost is greater than average variable cost, our average variable cost curve will increase, right, average variable cost will increase. And the point where marginal cost is equals to the average variable cost, you can say this point, right, where they both are equal this point is called as minimum point that means the average variable cost is minimum at this point if you are producing OQ output and this is the price uh, you know uh, you can say cost not price this is the cost which we are representing on the y axis then the cost average variable cost not average cost see we are talking about the relationship between average variable cost and marginal cost and to calculate the optimum point we have to establish the relationship between average cost and marginal cost because this is the individual cost whereas average cost includes average variable cost as well as the average fixed cost, right. So, to find out the optimum point where your cost of production will be minimum, we have to understand the relationship between average cost and marginal cost. But for now, we are talking about the relationship between average variable cost and marginal cost and here we are saying till the time your marginal cost is lesser than the average variable cost, your average variable cost will decrease, right. When the marginal cost is more than the average variable cost, then average variable cost curve will increase and at the point where they both are equal, that point would be considered to be as an uh, you know minimum point where the average variable cost will be minimum. And in the same way we can also define the relationship between average uh, you know marginal cost and 
average cost to find out the optimum point right. So, how are we going to establish the relationship between average cost and marginal cost? Again let us draw the curves of average cost, this is the average cost curve and let us draw the marginal cost curve also. So, here again what we are saying till the time the marginal cost is lesser than the average cost ok, when marginal cost is lesser than the average cost, average cost curve will decline right, average cost will reduce. When the marginal cost is more than the average cost, then the average cost curve will increase. See the marginal cost is more than the average cost then average cost will start increasing and the point where marginal cost is equal to the average cost there that is the point which is called as optimum points. Now, this is the point this is the point which is called as optimum point you can write uh, name this point with E. So, producing up to this level your cost of production will be minimum right. If you are producing OQ output your cost C, uh, C will be the cost OC will be the cost for producing OQ output and this is the minimum cost of production right. Here in this uh, you can see this relationship I have written here also for your better understanding this is your marginal cost uh, denoted by this dot, dotted line and here we have this average cost and what we are saying till the time your marginal cost is lesser than AC average cost your average cost curve will decline and when it is more the average cost curve will rise and at the point where they both are equal that is the minimum point which is called as optimum point right optimal point and producing up to this point our cost of production will be minimum. So, for shorter run we calculate it this way how and uh, up to what quantity we should produce so that we would be able to produce at the minimum cost ok. Moving ahead we have long run cost and output relationship. This we have studied about the short run how in short run we can reach up to the optimum point. Now, let us look at the long run cost and output relationship as we all know uh, long run is a period which is good enough for us to change our situations right and we have already understood that in long run we do not have fixed cost concept right because each and every cost can be changed we can vary them. So, no cost is fixed in the long run we have only variable cost. So, till now we have studied that average fixed cost is equals to average uh, sorry plus average variable cost is equals to the average cost this is what we have studied in the short run. But now here we can see that we can say that average variable cost is equals to the average cost. So, rather you call it as an average variable cost or the average cost it is almost same because they both are equal and there is no concept of fixed cost involved in the long run ok. So, this is what is basically we are going to start with long run period like I said is enough for all the cost including the uh, fixed cost which are short in the long run. Now, they are uh, uh, you know they, they can be varied right we can increase them. So, in short run variation in output are only possible with the range permitted by the existing fixed plants as well as equipment. So, if you want to increase the size of output in the short run you can increase up to a certain limit right beyond that you are not able to increase your size of capacity, but certainly in long run the entrepreneur has before him several alternative which includes construction of various kind and size of plants right. So, in long run you can definitely stretch yourself and you can produce more right. So, in long run we have no fixed cost since firms have sufficient time to fully adapt its plant and all cost becomes variable right. Now, let us look to the characteristics of LSE curve, how, how we are going to understand the properties of LSE curve. Let us first look at the LSE curve, how does it looks like. See uh, this LSE curve, this is your LSE curve, the long curve which we are able to see here right, this is basically the combination of various short run average cost curve. I hope you have understood that this is your average cost curve. So, here this is the first average cost curve which we are denoting with SAC1, then we have the next average cost curve which we are denoting with uh, SAC2 and then we have this third curve which we are calling as an SAC3. So, these are the different short runs average cost curve and when we combine them together right, 
we will able to draw this long run average cost curve. Long run average cost curve is basically the combination of various short run average cost curve, right. So, let us look at the properties what we are saying that LSE curve is tangential to various SSE curve. Tangential means it will touch, right. Whatever the SSE curves we have drawn for our uh, business purposes, LSE curve will be tangential to our SSE curve and LSE curve will always be a U shape, right. Uh, this curve which I have shown you will always be of U shape, right. And this is again because of economies and diseconomies of scale. Initially, when we increase the size of our output, our cost reduces, right. And why does it reduce? What are the reasons behind the reduction of the cost? Covering in the next lecture, right. But if you are continuously increasing the size of your output, your cost rather than reducing, it will start increasing. And this gave it is a shape of U, right. It, it is like a dish shape, right. So, that is why we are saying LSE curve is of U shape. Then we are saying that LSE curve will never intersect, that we have already understood that LSE curve is always tangential to various SSE curves, it will never cut, right. It will never cut your SSE curve, it will always touch it and it also touches it at different points, right. Like LSE curve will touch the various SSE curves at the middle of the center, right, where your, uh, you know, you have the optimum point of this LSE curve. C2 is the optimum point of LSE curve. So, here it is going to touch your SSE, uh, you know, curve and it is also going to touch it on the, uh, you know, optimum point of SSE1, the left of optimum point of SSE1 and the right of optimum point of SSE3, right. At three points it is touching the initial plant, optimum point, left to the optimum point of the initial plant and right to the optimum point of the last plant. So, these are some properties we have for the LSE curve. As you can see, for each and every curve, we have the optimum point with the combination of average cost and marginal cost. And that is why we have drawn here this long run marginal cost. And as we all know, where our average cost is equal to the marginal cost, that point would be the optimum point, okay. So, you can say that C2 is the point where your LAC is equals to LMC is equals to SAC is equals to SMC as because this C2 point is also the optimum point for SSC2. You see, the second plant, right, the second plant is also having this optimum point which is named here as C2 because C1 is the optimum point of SSC1, C2 is the optimum point of SSC2, whereas C3 is the optimum point of SSC3. And if we are combining them together and we draw this long run marginal cost curve, then again C2 is the optimum point for long run average cost curve. This is how we define it. C2 is equals to LSE at this point. Your long run average cost is equals to the long run marginal cost, which is also equals to your short run average cost and short run marginal cost, right. So, this is how we basically define the long run average cost curve. I hope the properties are clear to every one of you and you have understood it well, how we draw this long run average cost curve. So, if you look at the optimal plant size in the long run, what is the optimal plant size, right? Uh, how we are going to uh, make our production in the long run, like we have find it out our optimum point in the short run, up to which level we should produce so that our cost of production will be minimum. Same is the case. We are trying to find out the optimal plant size in the long run. As I have already told you conceptually, the optimum size of a firm is one which ensures the most efficient utilization of the resources. And in other words, optimum size of a firm will be one which minimizes the long run average cost, right. The point where your average cost, long run average cost is minimum that point would be known as the optimum point of your long run curve, right. So, here as we have seen the optimum size consists of at plant 2 that is SSE 2 and we can say that our cost is minimum at C2 Q2, right. This is how we have written here C2 Q2. If you are producing up to OQ2 output, right, your cost will be C2 and this is the minimum cost because if you are producing more than this, 
then also your cost will increase. If you are producing lesser than this, then also your cost is increasing. So, it is always advisable for you to produce up to that point where your average cost is minimum, right. So, these are the explanations which are being given here, which we have discussed already. And like I said, uh, at LSE curve, we are saying that C2 is the point where LSE is equals to LMC, which is again equals to SSC and SMC, right. So, this is how you are going to understand the optimal plant size in the long run, right. So, by now we have understood how we are going to find out the optimum point in the short run as well as in the long run. The only thing which you have to remember here is where the average cost is equal to the marginal cost either in short run as well as in long run. In short run we denote it with SSE and SMC whereas in long run we denote it with LSE and LMC, right. So, you have to find out uh, where these two costs are equal and that point will be the optimum point. And if you are producing up to that point, definitely our cost of production will be minimum. And that is the basically, uh, you know, we are doing to find out so that we could be able to minimize our cost, okay. Why are we working for this optimum point? Because we have already talked about uh, how important it is for the business houses to work on reduction of their cost because we are not left with the choices of increasing our prices in the market because of the competition. So, we need to be very careful while producing our goods, right. Moving ahead, let us look at the usefulness of LSE curve. Now, now what is the business implication of this LSE curve and how it is also helping us in planning, right, because LSE curve is also called as planning curve. It is not only helping you to find out the optimum point up to which you should produce, Whereas, it is also helping you to plan out your activities for future, how much plant size you would be needing or you should rather go with your existing plant size for your, uh, you know, capacity of production, right. So, this also have a business implication. Let me help you to explain this. See, one thing which we need to understand here is we are not going to produce always on the basis of this optimum point, rather we produce our goods on the basis of demand as we all know, right. If the demand of your product is more in the market, will you produce up to the optimum point only because your cost of production is minimum? That is not possible, right. If the demand of your product is more in the market, definitely you will produce more and if the demand of your product is lesser in the market, then again you will be producing less. Right. So, let us look at this LSE curve once again and how this LSE curve is helping the business to plan out their production capacity. Uh, this we, let us assume that uh, not assume this is fact that C2 is the optimum point as we have already discussed up to this point if you are making a production because this is the point where our LSE curve is equals to LMC right. So, this is the optimum point, but if we have to produce lesser than optimum point or if we want to produce more than the optimum point based on demand, then how are we going to make a decision? Suppose if we have to produce lesser than this, I want to produce the quantity up to OQ1. So, how are we going to produce this? What we have done is, I have drawn this straight lines toward this, uh, these curve that is SSE 1 and SSE 2. The, this is your SSE 1, this is SSE 2 and this is your SSE 3. So, to produce up to this quantity, I have uh, you know drawn this straight line and here you can see this is point A and this is point B, right. So, if I am producing it with SSE 1, my cost of production will be more and if I produce it with uh, only this SSE 2, uh, by under utilizing it, my cost of production will be less. So, this is how this LSE curve is helping me to understand whether I should over utilize my existing plant size or should I go ahead with the next plant or should I add a new plant to my business where we should be utilizing it or under utilizing it or over utilizing it so that our cost of production will be minimum, right. So, this is how this LSE curve help us to plan out our business activities. Now, if you look at the topic for our review today, we have talked about cost, what cost is, what are the different classifications of cost. We have understood the concept of total cost, total variable cost and total fixed cost. Thereafter, we have talked about average cost, average variable cost, how we calculate average fixed cost, what is the concept of marginal cost 
and we have also seen the relationship of cost and output in short run as well as in the long run and how we will be able to reach up to the optimum point. So, this is all for our today's discussion and these are the reference books for this lecture. Thank you all of you.